introducing these anatomy videos aiming at simplifying the basic anatomy with some correlation of the clinical anatomy by using mostly cadaveric specimens which are more reliable to understand the basic anatomy. Kindly subscribe for these videos to reach more audience and also share and like the videos to promote them and to get them on the main screen of the YouTube. Thank you. Now to the coming session. In this session, we are going to describe the anatomy of the pharynx. Let's start by the parts of the pharynx. It has a nasal part behind the nose, as we can see over here, and over here in that cadaveric specimen, and oral part behind the mouth, and another one here, the same in that uh, specimen, and laryngeal part, the lowest part behind the larynx, which you can see over here. As for the boundaries of the pharynx, as can be seen here in the that cadaveric specimen here, you can see above the body of the sphenoid and the basilar part of the occipital bone, the body of the sphenoid here and the basilar part here, that is the basilar part. Below, it's continuous with the esophagus, that's now the esophagus over here. In front, it is incomplete and it opens into the nasal cavity, the oral cavity, and the laryngeal cavity. That's all the parts in front. Now, still on the boundaries behind there is cervical portion of the vertebral column that's behind the pharynx. On each side, it communicates with the tympanic cavity through the auditory tube, which can be that opening over here. And the nasal part, that is the division of the pharynx now, a nasal part, and oral part, and the laryngeal part. These are the three parts of the pharynx. Now, if we look to the pharynx from behind, what we can see here, we can see the nasal part over here, we can see the oral part, that is the back of the tongue, and these are the nasal conici, and that is the nasal septum, that is the uvula here, and the lowest part is the laryngeal part behind the larynx. So, these are the parts as seen from behind. If we come to the first part, which is the nasopharynx, what we can see here, we can see the body of the sphenoid and the basilar part of the occipital bone that is forming the roof. Then the serpingio pharyngeal fold here, the serpingio palatine fold in front, that is the pharyngeal part connected to the pharynx, and that part connects to the Ballot and it is elevated by two muscles carrying the same names. And that is the pharyngeal tonsil, which is at the roof, exactly at the roof of the pharynx. And the ostium of the, of the auditory tube here, the tympanic tube opening in the nasopharynx. And that is the soft palate, which separate the nasal part from the oral part. And then that's what we call it a pharyngeal recess behind this salbingio palatine, salbingio pharyngeal fold. And that one is important clinically. It is uh, maybe the site of a silent carcinoma or uh, infection or whatever behind the pharyngeal recess or, or within the pharyngeal recess behind the salbingio pharyngeal fold. Now, these are the parts of the oral pharynx. That's the part here in that diagram, and that one in a cadaveric specimen. You can see that oropharynx over here. That is the balatopharyngeal, a balatoglossal fold here, and that is the balatoglossal in that specimen, the cadaveric one. That is the 
palatine tonsil over here and over here that is the palatine tonsil that is the palatopharyngeal fold here to the pharynx with the palatopharyngeus muscle and it is the same thing here that is the fold over here is very clear in that specimen the two folds or the anterior pillar and the posterior pillar that what we call it and lastly that is the epiglots over here in the diagram and the epiglots in the specimen that shows very well and very clearly the oropharynx still in the oropharynx where the important structure there which is the palatine tonsil you can see that is the palatine tonsil in a diagram here and that is the palatine tonsil in the same specimen which you have seen it before so that is the soft palate over here that is the soft palate here here that is the soft palate and that is the soft palate over here that is the palatopharyngeal fold over here which you have seen before and the same over here that is the palatoglossal that is the palatoglossal also here over here that is the palatoglossal fold that is the semilunar and supra uh, supra uh, tonsillar fossa semilunar fold and supra tonsillar fossa and the anterior tonsillar fossa is over here and a triangular fold over there that is the uh, close look to the tonsil as you said that is the anterior pillar the posterior pillar the tonsil itself and that is the soft palate that is the tongue down here now about the Valtan tonsil it is a massive lymphoid tissue situated on the lateral wall of the oropharynx on each side each tonsil is placed in a triangular recess which call it tensellar sinus between the palatoglossal and the palatopharyngeal arches or as I said anterior pillar and posterior pillar the upper part shows the deep intratonsillar cleft the medial surface is free and bulged into the pharynx it presents 12 to 15 recesses called tonsillar crepes are very famous when you are looking to a patient you can identify these recesses or crepes the lateral surface or the deep surface or the bed of the tonsil you can see here covered by a fibrous tissue that is the capsule of the tonsil and separate from the, separate the tonsil from the superior constrictor with the styloglossus muscle lying on uh, in the wall of the pharynx that is the superior constrictor and the styloglossus muscle anterior to it the tonsillar artery that one here branch of the facial artery ascending palatine pierces the superior constrictor and enter the tonsil accompanied by two vena comitans that is the two veins here around the artery now still on the lateral surface the antero inferiorly the hemis capsule is adders to that is the capsule is adders to the side of the tongue that is the tongue the palatoglossus that is the palatoglossus over here and the palatopharyngeus muscle over here which form the anterior pillar and posterior pillar again so that is where this hemicapsule is adhered to the glossopharyngeal nerve lies immediately lateral to the muscular wall of the tonsillar fossa and it is at risk if the wall is pierced or during surgery on the tonsil that's a very important part to be remembered so that is the glossopharyngeal nerve over here now an important large vein which we call it the bara tonsillar vein descends from the soft ballot to pierce the muscular wall of the pharynx to end in the pharyngeal plexus of veins it is responsible for excessive hemorrhage during excision of the tonsil and bleeding excessive bleeding is very common during tonsillectomy before of that particular vein now the arterial supply of the tonsil 
it, the main artery is the tonsillar artery, a tonsillar branch from the facial artery, which comes from the external cord. That's the external carotid. That is the lingual artery. That is the facial artery. And that is the branch coming from the uh, facial. It may receive twigs from the dorsal lingual branch of the lingual artery, this one here. The ascending palatine branch of the facial artery, which is this one here, and giving to the tonsil. The ascending pharyngeal artery itself, the ascending pharyngeal, that is the ascending pharyngeal. And greater palatine branch of the maxillary artery, that is the maxillary, and that is the greater palatine. That is the arterial supply of the tonsil. And of course, all of them come from the external carotid. The venous drainage is the baratoncellar vein, which we mentioned, the facial vein, the pharyngeal plexus of veins. The nerve supply is the lesser palatine nerve. That's all about what we should know about the tonsil for the time being. Still on the palatine tonsil, tonsillitis and tonsillectomies are common by pain referred to the ear through tympanic branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve, which we said it's very close to the bed of the tonsil. The tonsil forms a circular mass of lymphoid tissue, or better to say share in a circular mass of lymphoid tissue surrounding the opening of the digestive and the respiratory tubes, which is formed of anterior and laterally by the lingual tonsil, the lateral part by the palatine tonsil, lymphoid tissue around the auditory tube, and behind and above by the pharyngeal tonsil, which you have seen it in one of the diagrams. Now, the laryngopharynx, which is this part here, and we are looking to it from the back over here, the laryngopharynx. So that is the thyroid lamina here. That is the aryoglottic folds, one here and one here, and it is over here. And the important part in the laryngopharynx is to recognize what is called the biriform fossa over here and over here, and it should be lateral to the uh, aryoglottic fold, lateral to it and medial to the thyroid lamina here, between the thyroid lamina and the aryoglottic fold. And that's again a very silent area where tumors, food, any foreign body or anything can be impacted in that area. That is the epiglots here and over here. So that is the main part of the laryngopharynx. Let us see the pharynx as seen from uh, behind. If you are looking from behind, and this is a very important, uh, or I can say a clear uh, model, which you can see the pharyngeobasilar fascia here. That is the superior constrictor, which is not complete above and is completed by this fascia to the base of the skull, the pharyngeal basilar, the base of the skull. And this is the silohyoid ligament to the outer surface of the back of the pharynx. We are looking from the back now. That is the stylohyoid muscle. That is the styloglossus muscle, which we have seen it over the hyoglossus. That is the stylopharyngeus muscle. These are the three styloid muscles the stylohyoid, the styloglossus, and the stylopharyngeus, the three muscles. That is the pharyngeal raphi, the median raphi, where the three muscles of constrictor muscles will be inserted in. That is the superior constrictor. That is the middle constrictor. And that is the inferior constrictor over here, which is divided into two parts, as you can see, thyropharyngeal part and cricopharyngeal part. This is a diagram which illustrates the muscles of the pharynx from behind. We'll see it on a cadaveric specimen over here, and that is, of course, the esophagus continuation of the pharynx. What you can see here is a specimen from behind again, showing almost the same with some extra things. That is the pharyngeobasilar fascia, you can see it here. That is the base of the skull. That is the superior constrictor, that is the middle constrictor here, and that is the thyropharyngeal part of the inferior constrictor, and that is the cricopharyngeal part of the inferior constrictor. That is a very good illustration of a specimen 
for the three constrictor muscles, which form a cone. That cone, each muscle from below overlap the one above. So the middle will overlap the superior and the inferior will overlap the middle. Now, that is the upper border of the superior constrictor here, and that is the upper border of the middle constrictor here, and that is the upper border of the inferior constrictor, just to separate the three muscles from each other, superior, middle, and inferior, and then that is the vagus nerve, that is the inferior ganglia of the vagus nerve. If you continue here, that the attachment of the median raphi, pharyngeal raphi, to the pharyngeal tubercle, you remember it in the base of the skull, and that is the pharyngeobasilar fascia, which completes the pharynx from above. And this is the internal carotid artery here. That is the internal jugular vein here in the upper part. That's one coming from the jugular foramen and that one going to the uh, carotid canal. That is the sympathetic trunk seen from behind here. And that is the superior sympathetic ganglion. And that is the common carotid over here. That is the carotid sinus. That is tip of the greater corn of the hyoid bone. This one and this one is the tip of the greater horn of the hyoid bone. So that's a good section, I think, good specimen looking from the back. Now, if we start by the superior constrictor here, that is the upper border, and that is the lower border of the muscle, it takes origin by four parts. Posterior border of the medial pterygoid plate and pterygoid hamulus, this is what called trigopharyngeal part. From the trigomandibular raphi, if you remember it from the mandible, that is the bacopharyngeal part. The posterior end of the mylohyoid line of the mandible, that is mylopharyngeal part, and the side of the tongue, and that's what called the glossopharyngeal part. These are the parts of the superior constrictor. That is the same here, superior constrictor outline, and insertion, the fibers curve backwards into a median pharyngeal raphi, which you have seen it in the diagram, and you can see it over here. It is very important to, or very clear here, that is the, the median pharyngeal raphi, which is attached superiorly to the pharyngeal tubercle on the basilar part of the occipital bone. You can see it, both uh, muscles on each side will decussate uh, in the middle line forming that raphi. The middle constrictor, this part here, and that is the uh, lower part, and that is the upper part here, that is the middle constrictor. The origin, lower part of the stylopharyngeal ligament, and the lesser and the greater corners of the hyoid bone, and is inserted in the raphi. Lastly, the inferior constrictor muscle, which takes origin by two parts, thyropharyngeus, which we call it, that is the thyropharyngeus part, here, the upper part of the muscle, and this arises from the oblique line of the thyro of the thyroid lamina. You, are, you, you have seen that oblique line before, and a strip of the lamina behind that line, and by a small slip from the inferior cornea. That is the origin of the thyropharyngeus muscle. The cricopharyngeus, that small one here, and here, that is the one. And this arises from the side of the cricoid cartilage. That's why we said this, cricopharyngeus and thyropharyngeus. The insertion of the thyropharyngeus, that's again the thyropharyngeus here, is inserted into the median pharyngeal raphi, and the upper fibers ascend obliquely to overlap the middle constrictor, as we said. While the cricopharyngeus muscle is a special muscle that muscle here, that is the one, that is the boundaries of it, blend with the circular esophageal fibers around the, around the narrowest part of the pharynx. That's a very important part of the uh, pharynx, which we say this part of the muscle is so tight to make this site 
the narrowest part, as we said, of the GIT, not of the pharynx only. So that is the one which help in closing, forming a sort of a sphincter, preventing reflux of fluids from the esophagus to the pharynx. Also, it is said any 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 uh, foreign uh, uh, object can go through that uh, orifice of the cricopharyngeus. It will come out from the anal orifice. Otherwise, if it does not come from this orifice, it will not reach the anal canal. The nerve supply here of all muscles are innervated by the cranial part of the accessory from the pharyngeal plexus. That's the muscles of the pharynx. Now, structures passing between the three muscles or the intervals between the muscles. So there is some structure arising above the superior constrictor which are the auditory tube, the levator palati muscle, the ascending pharyngeal artery, and then between the superior and the middle constrictor, there is the, here will be passing thylopharyngeal muscle and the glossopharyngeal nerve. Then between the middle constrictor and the inferior constrictor here, over here, will be passing superior laryngeal vessels and internal laryngeal nerve. Below the inferior constrictor will be here passing inferior laryngeal vessels and recurrent laryngeal nerve. So this is the group of structures which pass in the intervals between the three constrictor muscles just above the superior and below the inferior and in between the superior middle, middle and inferior. Thank you very much for your attendance and listening and hope we receive your comments on that work, which will be much appreciated. Thank you again.